Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Foundcraft 3. I hope you're all good. And today we're going to carry on doing a little bit more Foundcraft, a bit more magical goodness. Now, in the last episode, we had a look at how we made a few bits and bobs, and today we're going to carry on, and we're going to look a little bit into kind of harnessing aspects. Now, as you know, when you create certain items using the Crucible, you are going to give off certain excess aspects which are going to go up as in flux into the aura and they're going to piss off your nodes, which is definitely what you don't want to happen because then they'll start sending out horrible things to try and kill you, which is uh, never, never really that good to be honest. Now there are a few ways you can kind of prevent this and you can't really ever stop it altogether, but you can kind of prevent it as much as possible, which is always a good thing really, I guess. And you do this by creating a few items. So once you've done enough research, you're going to... Uh, I see I've got all the research here because I spent ages sat in front of my uh, table here figuring everything out. But, you know, once you've got it all, you can make a few bits and bobs. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to make a warded jar. Now to make a warded jar, you need glass panels and you need arcane wood block. Now the arcane wood blocks are made a lot like the arcane stone blocks except you make them with wood. So you can either use regular wood or you can use four bits of great wood which is fairly easy to find so you can do either way. And once you've got those you give it a little slap with your, uh, with your stick which will cost you 20 viz and that will give you two arcane wood blocks. So let's grab some, uh, which one are we going to use? Let's use the very nice... We use great wood logs, why not? Let's uh, spawn some of these in. So we'll get some great wood logs. And we want four, don't we? <clears throat> and all we do is we pop them very nicely into here. So four great wood logs. Put our wand in and we'll get four arcane wood blocks. There we go. We can take this back out. And you can see that unfortunately the flux in the aura is getting a little bit mental. So, But it's kind of looking after itself. It's not too bad. The aura is going up. We're good. Now once you've got all of your uh, blocks that you're going to need, you're going to then want to move on to making some glass panes. So once you've got your glass panes, which I'm going to just spawn in now. Ooh, moving too far. So we want regular glass panes, and to make those you just put six glass in a row and you'll get 16 glass panes. So it's a very, very easy one. There we go. Now all we're going to want to do here is very simply put those around like a U and a great wood at the top, and that will create it. Now do we need to make this in anything? We need to make it in an arcane work table. There we go. So let's go back to our arcane work table, and we'll throw this in like this, and put one of our arcane wood blocks at the top, put our wand in, and we have a warded jar. Now, water jars are awesome, and I'll show you very soon why they're very, very awesome. But for the time being, they haven't really got much of a use until you find what's called an Alembic, which is eventually what we're building towards. So, once we've got our water jar, we then want to move on to basic flux research, and we're going to make an infusion altar. So, to do one of these, you need two gold ingots and a silverwood log, which obviously you're going to find from a silverwood tree, and that's going to give us a flux filter. So, let's go ahead and make one of those. So, we need a silverwood log just one and we need ourselves some gold ingots and we need two of those there we go now did that say to do it in the arcane work table I'm pretty sure it did oh no infusion oil so we're gonna use infusion oil which means we're gonna need a little bit of aspect so we're gonna need purus and we're gonna need primantio primantido I think yes that is the one so let's double check so gold and wood so the gold and the wood, and it will come down here with Purus and Primanti Toe. Now Purus is a bit of a hard one to actually find as far as aspects go, where you're not going to waste tons. I seem to always be wasting loads when I use this one. You can use, there's a certain couple, there's a couple of crystals you can use, so if I, um, yeah, there's a few shards that you can use to be able to do this. I find diamonds is probably the easiest one, but you do get tons of overflow. So diamonds will give you four, but you get 12 of the additional, which is uh, quite bad, really. Quite, quite bad. Uh, let's have a look. I'm not too sure if water buckets will let you do it. Uh, let's have the gander. No, water doesn't let you have it. You can't use the essentia. And let's have a look at shards. See, normally the water shards are the ones that will give you it. Nope, not even water shards are going to give you it. So it looks like we are going to use diamonds, and we're going to be rather wasteful, I'm afraid. So to do this we need, how much do we need? We need eight, so we're going to have to throw in two diamonds. Now we're probably going to very much go and uh, piss off the aura here, but that's just uh, unfortunately what it takes. So we'll throw these in, 
Oh, missing the bucket. Come on, get in. There we go. All right, so we're gonna waste 24. We're gonna really miss the. We're gonna we're gonna do one here. All right, so we got that. Now we need eight Primantito. Now the one I normally use for this is emeralds, because emeralds is exchange, and exchange is what we need. So here we go. So this gives us four, and we also got ten of the others and four of those. So we're really gonna go do it in here. So you have to be careful when you're doing this. Chances are I'm probably gonna send a wisp out after me, which is not gonna be good. But here we go. There we go. Okay, right, so we've got all these, and we're gonna make one. This is gonna really do some damage. So let's uh, do it. Okay, right, so the flux in the aura is currently high, which is not very good. So we've really gone and done it in. And the nodes should be kind of repairing themselves, hopefully. There you go, you can see some of the extra little wisps coming from the nose to try and help it out. It will get better over time, but you just wanna kind of uh, cool down on your magicalness while you're doing that. So let's go ahead and refill. Here we go. Cool, right, cool beans. Now once you've got your once you've got your flux filter, you're gonna want to move on to making one more thing. And we're gonna use this to make a arcane alembic. And we do this by using the water jar and the flux filter. And we need quite a few bits for this. Now you'd need eight vitreous, eight aqua, and eight aura. Plus all these, and you'd put these in the infusion altar, and that would create via it using 75 viz. Now, seeing as we've pretty much miffed the uh, ore off with all the flux so far, and the nodes are going a bit ballistic, I'm not going to make one of these, I'm going to spawn them in, purely because I don't want to go getting loads of wisps after me just yet. So we need an alembic, and we're going to take four of these. Now, alembics can be fitted directly onto your, onto your cauldron just here, and all you do is you just put them on the side, like that. You can use one, but four is the max you could use, which is always pretty damn good. Now, once you've got all these, what these are going to do are these are going to store the excess aspect into these. So, for instance, if I show one of these in, and you can see that we have four. So, there's four different aspects in there that aren't going to be used. Now, if I take my wand of the adept and give it a, give it a snap as if we're going to use it, you can see that they've gone into here. So, ten in here, four in here, two in here and four in here now none of that has gone into the aura so we haven't caused any more problems it's all been stored in here very nicely and you can see these filling up quite good now if you uh, kind of shift click on them it will throw it back in there and then you can carry on using all of it so let's get a little bit more water in our uh, bucket here we go very nice water bucket and drop that in there there we go, very good. <clears throat> We're going to throw another diamond in here. And just wait for it to boil up first, I guess. There we go. Cool, and use our wand. Wow, you can see most of it's gone back into here again. So, what you can use the watered jars for. So, watered jars are awesome. Basically because if you get watered jars, and you plonk them all around here. So, we're going to put here, 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 and here and here and we get ourselves some glass files which I'm pretty sure it shows you how to make these right at the top uh, yeah there we go glass files which are very simply in your workbench or just any regular workbench three bits of glass and a clay so they're really really easy to make so you haven't got to really worry about those at all so let's grab ourselves some glass files there we go, glass files. And we'll take five because we've made five. Now with these, all you have to do is you can run up here and you can take a nice little sample of your excess aspect. It will take eight at a time. Uh, it won't take any more, it won't take any less, it has to be eight. And then you can quite nicely just go and pop them in here if it lets me actually do it. Are you gonna go in the glass? Oh no, there it is. There we go. So eight in here. And you can keep filling these up until they get full and then you can move on to a different jar, which is quite mental. So we've got excess in here, so let's throw it in here. And have we got enough in the other ones? This one's got four. This one's got eight, so we can take more from this one and pop this inside one of our watered jars. There we go. And this one has two, so this one hasn't got enough in it yet. And that one has nothing, that one has nothing. Well, this one's got four, but we can only take eight, so yeah. Now, the good thing of having these here 
is basically you could now go ahead and move your cauldron, your crucible, to somewhere else and not have to worry about it. Purely because this is now going to use the excess aspects that are from here. So, for instance, if we find something that needs, I believe that's Pimantio, I believe. Let's uh, have a look. So, let's find a recipe that we needed. So, a minute ago, we were making watered jars, which needed, let's have a look. We needed, yeah, Pimantio. So, we was making flux field. So, let's get two gold and a silver wood log. So, two gold and one silver wood log. And pop this in here. There we go. You can see that it's filled in the Pimantio straight from this jar into here. So we wouldn't have to go creating any more uh, excess aspect by throwing stuff into the cauldron because we've already stored it in our watered jars. Now this is great because it means that you're not going to go annoying the aura just too much. Obviously you can only have four of these on here at a time but you can obviously mix and match what you put in there. So if one's on zero and you throw a, diff a different aspect in there, as long as you keep taking the aspects out, you're not going to really have a problem. And you can have as many watered jars as you like all with different things. So you could have a nice shelf that just has Pimantio, you could have a different one that has the uh, kind of fire symbol on it, and you can just go across and do it that way. So there you go. That is how you use the Alembics and the watered jars. And that's how you store your aspects and don't piss off the aura too much. Good times. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed that one. My name is Lewis. Make sure you give it a good thumbs up, and I'll see you soon in the next episode where we're going to look at golems, which will be insane. So have a good one. Bye-bye.